Alright you beautiful people, welcome back to this Python video series of PyQt5. In this video we are going to learn how to use Qt Designer to just drag and drop objects. In the last three videos we learned how to create a very simple window with a label and a button and it kind of looks like this, which is not half bad. We have a button and we have a simple text. Using Qt Designer we are going to do what we did in the last three videos in just this one video. If you don't know what a Qt Designer is, it kind of looks like this. It's basically a software which you can drag and drop and you can basically build it using this drag and drop functionality. You don't have to code it from scratch. And this is this software is basically what makes PyQt very, very unique because it's very easy to create these GUIs. So first of all, we are going to learn how to install this Qt Designer. The simplest way I know how to do it is using this Qt Designer. So you can just Google Qt Designer and then go to the second link, which is build systemman.io qt design download so when you open it up it will kind of look like this and i'm just going to add this link in the description of this video but you can also just type this link out if you want and then download the version that you want you can download the windows or the mac one and after you open it up you will have different options you can have buttons uh, you can have without buttons i'm just going to open up very very simple window and i'm going to click on create so this is going to be a very simple window now you can just drag and drop stuff over here so for example what i'm going to do is just to replicate what we did in the last video first of all let me show, show you that it, it is pretty cool like you can do stuff very very easily you can add a progress bar horizontal line whatever you want so it's very very easy to use now to add a button and a label so first of all we are going to add a label over here and then we are going to add a button over here first of all let's actually focus on this label instead of this push button so let's just focus on this label so on the right hand side, you can see you can change the properties of whatever this label is. So the first thing is the object name. Make sure, for example, if you add another label, they'll have the need to have different object names. So first of all, this is the label one then this is the label two. And you can see they are kind of giving it different names, but it's very important to change their object name when you are creating these objects. For example, the first one, we can call it label underscore hello, hello world or something like that and uh, the second one you can just name anything differently so for example in this label 2 let's just call it label 2 doesn't really matter and now we can just delete this uh, because we'll be just working with label 1 so yeah it's very important to change their object name and if you're confused about what this object name is if you go to our code they're basically the name of our variable so for example in our previous video we called our variable as text and the button was called as button 1 so even when we add a button, so let me go back, even when we add a button over here, the object name is going to be changed. So for example, over here, our name is called, our variable is called push button, but we wanted to change it to button one. So this is basically the variable name. And then afterwards, these are the different properties. So for example, we want to change the size of this label. Currently it's very, very small. So what we can do is we can go over here, this font one, and we can change the font, uh, whatever font we want. So let's actually change it uh, to something else. Uh, let's just change it to all right this one and the font you can just uh, make it 22 so that's a little bit big and you can see that it's kind of overflowing now you can just increase the size of this thing and uh, yeah so this is a text label and to change its uh, text we can just double click on it and we can just type in whatever we want i'm just gonna call it hello world because we have already named our variable as label underscore hello and now to change this push button so first first of all the size of this button can be changed by just like expanding it and then just to change the name of this push button or whatever the text over here is what we can do is we can again double click on it and we can just write uh, something like um, click on me and we can also change the size of the text over here simply by the same uh, what we have done in the previous uh, in the text one so we can just click on ok and let's expand it a little bit and yeah this looks pretty good now to save it obviously you can kind of experiment on your own in the next video we are going to actually learn how to add a menu bar but we'll talk about that in the next video so right now we need to add this to our python code because currently there is no way to import this into our python code so what we are going to do is we are just going to save this file click on save as and then you can just go to whatever folder you want to save it what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my folder where my python file is of iqt and I'm gonna just save it inside over here and I'm just gonna change is uh, from untitled to maybe latest or whatever you want and click on save so now if we go to our python code you can see that this latest ui has been added and it kind of looks like this it's an xml it's not in python so the next step we need to do is to convert this xml file 
into a Python file. For that, we are going to use a tool or an extension called PyUIC. And to do that, first we need to go to the folder where we have installed or saved our latest UI. Then what we can do is inside over here, we can just open up our command prompt by just typing in CMD. And over here, we can just install uh, something known as PyQt tools. These are just extra tools that you can install. So I'm just going to write PyQt5 tools and make sure you add this five over here because every version has different tools. I'm just going to press enter and I've already installed it. So it's going to say requirements already satisfied, but make sure you install it. And after that, I'm just going to use our uh, extension of PyUIC. So you can see that we have our latest UI. So what I'm going to do is and you can see I'm, I'm already at the path of PyQt or we are already at the folder that we want. And over here, what we can do is we can just write pi uic minus x stands for the input file or the file that we want to change to a Python file. So over here, I'm just going to refer to our latest dot uh, ui file. And now what do we want as the output file? So output is uh, called as minus o and then we can just call it whatever we want. I'm just going to call it latest underscore main dot pi file and press enter. And he's going to say this command is not recognized because we also have to add the five over here because we are using PyQt5. That's why we also need to add a five. And now we press enter and a new file of latest underscore main should be created. And if we go to our uh, Visual Studio code, you can see this latest underscore main has been created. Now, if we close this out, you can see that we have our UI main window and sometimes these class names might be a little bit different, but you can see that we have also called our class in the previous video where we learned object oriented programming. Uh, we also called our UI main window. And this was the reason in the previous video why I wanted to name the class specifically, but you can call it whatever you want. Anyways, inside our latest underscore main, we have a main window and inside the setup UI, we also call the setup UI where we created text and buttons and basically pi uic or pi qt does the same thing it has different widgets and then it has this uh, font and then we called our label as label underscore hello if you don't remember inside our pi qt inside our object name we call it label underscore hello so this is our uh, hello and then button is button one and it's pretty simple we have we haven't created a menu bar yet but it has added it just in case and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so now what we can do is if we run this right now and you'll be able to see that we have our main window but on clicking on the button nothing happens because we haven't added the click functionality so how did we add the click functionality in our previous video what we did was inside our uh, function or inside our ui class uh, ui main window what we did was we also added this method of def on click so I'm just going to copy this and I'm just going to paste it something somewhere below over here, def on clicked. And uh, we want to change the label, this text, because inside our main.py, our variable name was text, but this time it's a little bit different. Our variable name is label underscore hello. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it over here. And now finally, we have to connect our button to this method. So how did we do in the previous video? We use this dot click dot connect. So basically we are going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to copy this from here and wherever we are using our button one. So somewhere over here, I'm also going to add this uh, basically self dot on click thing. And now if we run it, this should uh, give us a change of text. So for example, if you click on this, click on me, you can see that the text has been changed. You can see you can't see the text over here, but what you can do is when we were creating this hello world, you can just increase this size so that whenever you click on this, click on the button, there is proper size to accommodate the changed text. So guys, this is pretty much it for this video. You understood the basics of how to create a very, very simple user interface. And obviously you could have written all this code yourself, but I highly recommend that you don't because Qt Designer itself gives you the functionality to create these things very, very simply. In the next video, we are going to learn how to add a menu bar to our window. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Peace out.